interesting. <laughs> so hi, everyone. I wanted to confirm if everyone online can hear me. And see there if there's if you can mark with some. No. Crystal clear. Yeah, perfect. So welcome today for today blue seminar. Uh, we're going to. The yeah? wrong screen is shared. The wrong screen. That's you here. Okay. We're going to today listen from Lisa Engelprecht. <laughs> and she will tell us about her work at the University of Cape Town. So Lisa is uh, born and raised in South Africa and had uh, an intermediate space in so four years teaching in London. But she decided to go back to imaging and <laughs> to imaging, working as an imaging scientist in Cape Town. In this case, she will tell us about the microscopy unit she runs at Stellenbosch University. And I see here we also have some uh, online attendance from Stellenbosch directly. Uh, ben Loss is also uh, very very close connect. So that is our partner from Global Bioimaging for South Africa Bioimaging. <laughs> Are you saying, can we see yeah, you at the big screen? No, but no. I think only, sorry, Ben, we, <laughs> we cannot see you around, but we can put afterwards for the discussion. And uh, Ben is an imaging research professor at the University um, of Stellenbosch in, sorry, in Cape Town. And Lisa, we're very happy to have you here. I'm also happy that a lot of you will have time to chat with Lisa afterwards and, and get to know more about the facility and, and show her the imaging facilities that we have here in campus. So I will let you start. Thank you. Um, I am very privileged to be here. If you just give me a second, I think I'm sharing the wrong screen and I've tried, there's about four options. I just need to figure out which one's the right <laughs> one for the online people. Um, Actually, it's looking fine online. Let's try again. Do you see the two screens, the presentation? No, I just see one. Okay, then it's fine. Okay, thank you. I want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, it was, it's quite exciting. I think I haven't um, been to the MBL before, and um, I think it's a real privilege. For us from South Africa, we don't travel a lot. Um, you choose, pick and choose where you can travel to, so um, I'm really really happy to be here. So um, Yara and um, Joanna asked me to talk about um, the imaging facilities in South Africa, the, the bioimaging communities that start up in, uh, in South Africa. I'm, I've got fingers in uh, many pies. Um, some of them just a little pinky, but in general, I have an idea what's going on. Um, also part of what I'll explain later on. Um, right, so I've decided, I just need to figure out Oh, right. Um, no, one slide back. Right. So I will divide my talk into three parts. The first part I'm starting in Stellenbosch, my, um, my day job, my salary paying job, um, what the imaging facility is about, what we do every day, um, what we focus on as a, an example of an imaging facility in South Africa. We are not a typical imaging facility in South Africa, and I'll get to that, but um, at least it's, a, it's an explanation. Um, then I'll focus on my second part of involvement, where I'm heavily involved now, is the South African bioimaging um, community. And then finally, I'm also heavily involved in the African bioimaging consortium. And I'll explain what we're doing there. And beyond, well, I will find, find or finish the talk off with the beyond. Right. Um, so I'm working for the Central Analytical Facilities. We are one of um, not many of the universities in South Africa have a centralized, I want to say, core facility structure like we have, but we are one of the few that have all of our core facilities is under one umbrella. And our motto is to advance research in the scientific community all over South Africa, but specifically for Stellenbosch, um, with these ex exceptional analytical tools and support. So we are appointed as specialists. And then we are open to, we're an open access um, facility. So anyone from anywhere in the world, anywhere in South Africa, industry, non-industry, even we ever, even get every now and again, a school project might come along and a parent might pay the fees and say, oh, my kid wants to image something for a school project. We'd have about two or three of those in about five years. Um, so we're open access. Um, so just to give you an idea where we are, um, this is the, southern point I, I think back in the first slide i'll show you in a little circle um for those who i'm not sure if the audience can see but um we are right at the tip of the cape peninsula the little piece there that comes down um and in my map here you'll see there's actually i don't know where, why i can't see the mouse all right guys let's see 
Oh, we do present mode now. So go to your check the screen. And you can change here. Ah, it's a laser pointer. Yeah. Can you see now? Right. So um we are actually not in Cape Town, but very close. We work closely with the University of Cape Town often, but we are actually I will need to turn it around. Um we are actually based in Stellenbosch. Um, that's our main campus. It's a little town, much smaller than Heidelberg. I thought we are comparable to Heidelberg. We're not. <laughs> it's much, much smaller. It's a town. Um, and then also we have a medical campus. The medical campus is not in Stellenbosch. Um, we have a massive um, uh, um, public hospital in the middle of uh, the Western Cape um, area, which is Tigerberg Hospital. And next to the Tigerberg Hospital is the medical school, which is also part of Stellenbosch University. So the central analytical facilities are not just microscopy. We've got microscopy, flow cytometry, DNA sequencing, CT scanning, um, ICP, XRF for the material scientists, um, neuromechanics for the, for the physiotherapists and the sport scientists, um, mass spectrometry, biochemistry, using them a lot, NMR for the chemists, PET CT, they are in um, at Tigerberg at the hospital, and then also a biogrip that's a unit that is specifically started very recently for water analysis. Um, it's one of the uh, national um, challenges is to ensure that our water quality is always improved. So that it's a water analysis uh, station. I used to be, um, our, it was a little bit different about two years ago. We had fluorescence microscopy and flow cytometry in one combined. I was the manager of that. And then we decided to split off flow cytometry separ separately and the um, fluorescence and electron microscopy joined. So we are now just the, the microscopy unit. Um, so the micro microscopy unit um, is at Stellenbosch. We have fluorescence. There's a lab. I'm going to divide them now into the different labs we have in locations. We have a lab for the fluorescence microscopy where we have a confocal microscope, uh, Zeiss LSM 780 LRP is one. So it's a involve, including many of the modalities. We have confocal on it, SR SIM and um, SIMLIM, um, all on one microscope. The microscope is now 10 years old and um, We'll talk a little bit later on about equipment challenges and so on. The bottom one I've put into uh, hyphened lines or, or dotted lines because it's not a perfectly functional microscope anymore. We're really trying to get the last of, out of its life out of it, um, but it gives us a lot of problems. Um, the system is was installed, I think, in 2006, and um, it's that should we spend or should we not spend to upgrade or not, and, and the cost is incredibly... It's it's the question, is it worth it or not? So that's why it's in dotted lines. <laughs> then we have an electron microscopy unit at Stellenbosch, just a different lab in a different building. They, um, or my colleagues, they work on the Merlin F uh, FXM and um, also on an EVO um, that does EDS and WDS. So they, they are in the geology building. They focus a lot on material sciences, but because it's an open access facility, a lot of bi biological samples come through, especially where the engineering um, People are working on um, bioengineered uh, engineering where they, where they try to do biotechnology. They would come to the, the same as well. As well. And then at Tigerberg, the medical campus, our unit also has a Thermo Fisher volume scope. It's about, it was installed in 2019, started off in 2020, and then COVID hit. Um, and then we also have a, a wide field uh, access observer inverted microscope for, for lifestyle imaging. So it's a lower end microscope than the confocal, but it is part of our microscope uh, collection. Right, so um, we do, my, my speciality is basically confocal, almost anything confocal. I don't wanna say anything, that's a bit dangerous, but we've done FRET, we've done um, lifestyle imaging, um, uh, spectral and uh, lambda spectral imaging, um, what else? Basically, almost any, everything on a, on a confocal, um, as well as super resolution. As I said before, we do SOSIM and SIMLIM. So SIMLIM hasn't been taken up that much. There's very limited amount of people who actually have taken up that technology in the past 10 years, um, but it has been used. And then Clem, we as a facility um, have started in, to, to engage in, in the CLEM workflows about five, six years ago. And it's a slow process in South Africa, um, but we are still growing our, our CLEM um, uh, tools, 
in, in the unit. Then on the same, we, it's actually limited to this. Again, the, the microscopes have very many um, detectors. The majority, I didn't put in the detectors that are mainly for uh, material sciences. There's, there's uh, Kath CL, they do a lot of um, the geology samples are imaged with CL, but we use the same secondary electrons. We have stem detectors on, on both um, the Tigerberg and Merle, um, Stellenbosch um, microscopes. So we don't have a TEM at Stellenbosch, a normal um, TEM. There are other facilities in the Western Cape that has uh, transmission electron microscopes, but what we can offer is the STEM, um, STEM, STEM option. And then the volume EM at, at Tigerberg, um, which is a slower process, but um, there's been some wonderful work done by my colleague, uh, Jürgen Krill. I didn't, you'll see, I didn't give any credit because I can't remember who it took what, except for the volume EM was uh, Dr. Jürgen Krill. But um, if I can give credit then to the team, former colleagues who have been part of the production of those images, Dr. Dimesili Lomkwana, Dr. Angelique Lowry, Professor Lydia Yubar, Dr. the bottom three, to be honest, the, the previous three left in the past five years earlier on, but the bottom three left all in the first three months of this year. So staff is one of the other challenges in South Africa is how to retain them. Of those six people, five is not in South Africa anymore. Dr. Dumekisile Lomkona is at the Crick's Institute in London. Dr. Laurie is actually in South Africa. She's just left um, science for now. Um, Professor Lodia Ibar is in the US. Jürgen Krill left for Australia. Alicia Both has left for the US. And Christian Naika also left for the US. So it's something, it's one of the challenges in South Africa is to actually retain the expertise. Um, where we are. So the three members that are left, we hopefully will appoint another person soon. Um, but we might line Rosenberg for same EDX, that's her speciality, EDX and, and WDS. I meet with all the flu fluorescence um, techniques and then Yannicka Conradi is a junior analyst, um, but she's mainly focusing on the same. She's based at Tigerberg on the volume scope. She's, so she's basically very fast learning all the, the volume scope um, techniques. Right. Um, I do have to say, if you talk about imaging facilities in South Africa, you have to mention the challenges. I do realize it's global, um, but we keep thinking it's just a little bit worse in Africa. So um, I know everyone has if issues with financial challenges, the challenges of staff, staff skill set and retaining those skills, as I just explained. Um, to update the techniques and the instruments, make sure that you are staying up to date. And then your user management, the day-to-day -day struggles with book, please don't cancel. What's your, you've written it wrong, et cetera. So I, that's how I would categorize the, the challenges. I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but just to give you an idea of our financial um, challenge, we have an almost full cost recovery model in Stellenbosch. And that's why I said in the beginning, we are not a very typical imaging facility in South Africa. As far as I know, we are the only one that are required or expected to um, aim for full cost recovery, except for the instrument cost. The instrumentation we buy through national funding, no way that we can fund um, equipment, um, but almost all the other expenses, salaries, running costs, maintenance, and if you travel, if you um, have to buy small equipment that's not part of the national equipment programs, any other costs we have to cover. And um, to give you an idea, um, it's not too bad in microscopy. The, the salary cost is a lot. And you might say, oh, but that seems like we earn very good salaries. I've just shown you how people leave <laughs> because they, it's, it's not because it's not nice in South Africa. It's probably because overseas, there are often better opportunities or wider opportunities, um, et cetera. So I can't really reduce our salary component of the cost. Um, and then to give you a, a very realistic idea of what's the challenge, we are expected to be on the red line. And as you can see, we've reached that cost effectivity one year. All the other years we are um, basically, sorry, we, we need help from the university or from across. Some of our other units do make um, some uh, a profit. And then it's not a profit because as a facility, they would cover then the shortfall that we, we have um, run into. 
we, as you can see, 2020 was our bad year, but it wasn't the worst because 20, or oh, it's the worst, but 2019 already shows that it's, it's not just 2020 that, that was the issue. Um, one of the things I couldn't find a graph on this, but our national funding for research has dropped. And because we are, we require, I get to that now, sorry. Um, we, our user profile is mostly researchers. They are, the same lab has some um, industry clients. So we do make some income from them, but the confocal and fluorescence and volume scope, it's ba basically the research, the researchers that use the instruments and research funding has been dropping in South Africa. I've seen, I've seen graphs, but I couldn't find them in time that the national funding is, is reduced um, over the years since more or less 2019. Um, and we can see that because we, don't, we do not have the users anymore. We are planning to show that financials is not the only thing that's important. The, uh, as many of you might know, Global Bioimaging produced this white paper on um, how to measure your impact. And yes, finances is important. Um, it's one of the key performance uh, uh, indicators, but you need to also indicate personal infrastructure, facility performance, your user, user um, satisfaction, publications, how many resources do you create, um, we are not on par with all of those. Um, I mean, I've, when I've seen this list, I thought mm, we need to improve this, this, and this, but there are some of these that we are really, we are actually producing and making an impact. If I just can, I've, I've shown you my colleagues who left South Africa, they got jobs overseas because we have enabled them by giving them skills that they didn't have before that. So in a way it's bad, but it's also showing that there's an impact. Okay. Um, other impact, our skills development is very strong. Um, we do a lot of courses um, in-house. So our confocal courses, for example, I do at least four courses a year, six people at a time, um, training them on the microscope. And um, that's just full on courses. And then in the middle of the year, we are also, and, and those are paid courses, the, the top one. The bottom one is basically free of charge, open access, you have to apply to come and we also give about six to seven people, but we're trying to then introduce the other techniques as well, so like uh, super resolution or CLEM is some of the EMIM courses as well. So those don't, they, they don't leave with a skill necessarily, but at least an introduction and it's free of charge um, to whoever participates. And we're trying to make it non-Stalinbosch people, but actually people from around the, wherever we can find, whoever's interested and can come to Stalinbosch can join. And we, we pre-select them as, outside first and then seven bosh. Um, just to show you another measurement that I would say is showing your training because we train one-on-one -on -one a lot. Um, if you look at these graphs, they are 2018, 2019, I don't have the values for 2020 onwards. 2020, I did all the, all the work because I had to sit alone by myself in the lab. But um, there's about 25%, 28%. So it's about a quarter of the time, it's staff assistants. The rest of the time, it's students who are fully trained to use the instruments. And I think that's a good indication of, yes, we have transferred the skills. Otherwise it would have been a whole different story. Um, we, I've put this in by publications is of course another um, output and showing impact. And I've put the book chapters here specifically because a book chapter usually follows a long line of publications. I don't have the publication data right there. If I've got a long, a big folder full of publications. Um, but I thought, let's, let's show the final, um, usually a book chapter is where there was a whole long track record of publications. Um, so second part of my talk, now a different kind of change. <laughs> I've, um, last year, uh, so, um, yeah, let me go, get to last year. South Africa Bioimaging exists for a while already. And I've been on the sideline, I've been involved, I've been talking at two of the events, but just as a talk and like, moral support. And then last year I got the travel grant to go to the Global Bioimaging and um, Professor Ben Lewis, who's online, he asked me to represent Sabi. And <laughs> part of the, all the activities that happened after that is because I committed in front of a whole audience of hundred people and said, we are going to do this. So I have committed to do a, a few things and we are, we are, we are working on that. Um, so just a bit of the history of Sabi. So um, they started in, um, 2016, they, I think they signed the MOU with Global Bioimaging about 2016. 
Um, there was a meeting at the UCT, all of imaging facilities that introduced a global bioimaging. So awareness was created. Then in 2018, another meeting was held and there we discussed quite a lot about the challenges and how difficult it is. And we had the NRF there and NRF is the National Research Foundation, Foundation in South Africa. Um, not much happened after that. And partly because it was COVID, um, start, there's, there's many reasons why it was quite dormant. And then due to my um, representation there and a lot of commitments I made, oh no, sorry, just back back one. Um, we did do two um, events before I even got the travel grants. Um, we had a meeting at the beginning of last year. We, we invited a lot of the um, students for, a, no, sorry, for an um, image analysis workshop. Due to my involvement in ABIC, I met uh, Professor Cheng, um, Leong Chu. And I said to him, we don't have a lot of um, image analysis skill at Stellenbosch. Imaging skills is fine, but the image analysis is lacking. So we arranged for him to, to come and join. It was open again to everyone who can join. Um, and then just after that, we held another um, conference, a, a mini symposium, where we discussed what is what does the bioimaging uh, landscape look like in South Africa? And after that, I was fully in, in, pulled in with the whole global bioimaging. So, um, why Sobi? Why, why all these communities? Have, uh, it's, it's a question, but because South Africa does have good instruments and does have imaging facilities, I think we can play a leading role in Africa as well. We can set an example, but we need to make sure that the African community of imaging scientists and facilities is healthy and connected. So, um, and that's the one thing. The second thing is a lot of the people when I started imaging, a lot of old people were in the microscopy. So everyone knew the older people. And in the past five to six years, a lot of them resigned. So now they are new people and we're not all connected. So we realized, oh yeah, I, things are jumping. Um, we realized there's, there's a bit of a disconnect. Um, there are also other communities that we are aware of, but not necessarily involved. So there is a very old community already, uh, the Microscopy Society for Southern Africa. Um, they mainly do EM and there's a lot of strong material science um, people there. So often their life sciences feel a bit under the radar. Um, so we felt let's let's make Sabi that support to, to feed M Southern with more life sciences, but make sure that we, we look after the, um, bio, the, the biological scientists. African Bioimaging Consortium started fairly recently from the Cape Town team. Um, Karen, Karen Jacobs and Mike Reich, my, many of you might have seen some presentations from them. Um, it feels like I've seen <laughs> a lot, but if you haven't, I'll, they'll come up later on. And then we, I've recently been notified that there's also another initiative that started. Why does it do this? Um, started about a few years back. We, it's, it's called Africa inclusive microscopy. And that started from a university in the north of South Africa, from the University of Witwatersrand, where they do uh, Africa-wide online training. And they do courses every year, a massive course and a lot of registrations. So there are things, we just don't know about them. So sorry, we think, because many of these start in South Africa, it, we need to connect. We need to make sure that people know of the different things that, that one we don't duplicate and that we fill the gaps wherever there are gaps. So um, one of the things that we, we are not going to copy all the training and all the workshops and all of that, we want to make sure that we create a platform where all of these can connect and know what's going on. I think there's a time on there. <laughs> Please. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so we want to, as I said, other imaging societies need to, you need to know about each other. There are a lot of core facilities in South Africa. We don't know about them all. Um, we don't know each other. And then, as I said, young imaging scientists that just joined and they're just trying to get their feet going, but they don't know about anyone else. So the idea was to do a web website. Um, we launched this website in March. We had, I'm fairly proud of this, in South Africa to have 40, more than 40 people listening for more than an hour. The booking was for an hour, up to quarter to post the hour, there was still more than 40 people in the meeting. It was really, really motivating to see that people really want this to, to happen. So we had Ancha Pepe, um, who explained to everyone what global mind imaging is, and that we are part of this whole community. We are not alone. We had uh, Dr. Dimitri Silila um, 
zooming in from Crick's Institute to, to motivate the rest of South Africans, look where you can go with imaging. Um, Karen and Michael are the people from ABIC. So we give, gave all of the networks already also a voice at this meeting and said, introduce yourselves to everyone in this meeting. Um, and we also had industry partners. Uh, this is Colleen Wyatt, I think, from, um, I don't think my name says Colleen, from, um, she's, uh, the, the company is Worsen, but they represent Olympus and, or Evident, not Evident. And then we had Alicia from um, the company she's working for is Separations, but they they represent molecular devices and Leica in, in South Africa. So we had industry, we had people from, from abroad, we had other communities, everyone had a voice and we connected. So this is the website, just a quick glance over, um, main page, what we are, what we are about, there's a need, we saw it in this meeting. Um, we will post all training events, trying to post as much as we can as, as they come along. We want to have news and opportunities where there's um, the new CZI um, grant for, oh, what was it called? Um, measuring metabolism across scales. We, we try to post what we can when, when it comes across our, our email list. Um, we want to have a platform for resources, materials and resources. In other words, little videos. How do I do this? How do I freeze? How do I, I don't know if you know these pellicles with biofilm pellicles, but I had a student who said, I had to struggle so long to figure out how to do this and said, make a video, please, and we'll put it on. Um, so we, we want to post videos of even image analysis protocols and then also for publications. People need to see that South Africans publish with imaging data. We are actually very active in the, in the field. And then finally, a platform for all the core facilities where people can find where are the core facilities. There's links on this page to every core facility and every facility, um, their website. Okay, so that is the imaging facilities um, at the different institutions. And we want to, we want to, there's only one page so far, but we want to expand this website so that each facility has a page and you can put on that page who's the people, what instruments you have, what's your strengths, etc. And then we want to make a, a meeting before somewhere in the next two months, we'll have a meeting where we invite all the core facility manager, staff, not just managers, and we discuss how can we make sure that we're healthy, a healthy community, making sure that we tackle these, um, these uh, challenges that we have, but also raise awareness because we're going to invite the National Research Foundation and they can give us feedback. What do they see in the reports that they see every year? And what do we find? Listen, this is difficult. How can the NRF help us um, in a better way? And then um, we'll have to invite more people, um, expand the, the web page, maybe go for LinkedIn, blog, Twitter, Facebook, all those. I'm not sure yet. I see it's a lot of work. Maybe a website first and newsletter maybe. Um, and then we want to show showcase the publications. We want to share the protocols. We want to make the videos. We also want to showcase the, the, um, the researchers. Make these videos. I don't know. You guys probably know the Peter tool, microscopist, we want to do something like that for South Africans. We want to okay, tell us who you are. We want, it's, it's just a, a very, very nice idea to learn to know people. And then my third part. I think 10 minutes more. Right. Um, so my third involvement is the African Bioimaging Consortium. Um, they started in 2021, basically as towards the time when COVID was still pretty much with us and the African community have actually adopted Zoom a lot more than in 20, 2019. Just a quick backstory, I've also been do, doing flow cytometry and we've tried to do a pan-African flow cytometry community from 2017 to 2019. Have a long email list, we tried to do one online meeting through Skype, that time Skype was the big thing in South Africa, it was horrific. Then this call falls off. We were three people in the meeting eventually and we were like, oh, we don't know what to do. So it basically died down. And then after COVID, suddenly Africa was ready for online. So it was almost as if AB came online when the incubation period in Africa was ready for, for expansion. And I, from my personal experience, I know that that was a major the, a role player in why African Bioimaging Consortium hit and it went. It's not the only one, but it's definitely playing a part. Okay, so the idea with the African bioimaging community driven um, to unite um, and empower the African community 
of anyone who's doing microscopy, medical bioimaging, anything like that. I'm not the lead. Um, the two people that I've shown earlier on, Karen, Karen Jacobs and Mike Wright from UCP, they um, were the founding members. There are two other members in North in Africa who's part of the EXCO, but I volunteered myself for um, one of the working group leaders. So I am very involved. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to read everything because I can't read. Yeah, I struggle with that. Um, but you can see that we want to unite people, we want to connect people, and we want to figure out what are the challenges up north, because it seemed after many meetings we realized South Africa's challenges, not exactly the same as the, Afri the, the challenges in other parts of Africa. Um, so we have to kind of listen also to what the other African countries say, about what their challenges are. We can't solve African challenges if we don't understand what they're saying. Not what they're saying, but what their challenges are. We're not in the same, same place. Um, then three main um, things. We have we identified three core challenges, and we, we, we basically arranged the working groups around those three, three core challenges. One is training. If you don't train the people, they won't know what to use, um, and raising the awareness of what microscopy is. Secondly, the community building to make sure that we are connected. And thirdly, um, access to resources and facilities. I'm not part of the bottom two. My job is the training and exposure and so on. So I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so the ABIC is also connected globally. That's also one of the strengths. Uh, the flow cytometry part, we didn't really, we were connected to ISAC, but the um, cytometry global, but it seemed like ABIC managed to link very quickly globally with many, many partners. And as you can see there, they are very, very involved. That's one of the key, key things, I think, for the survival of a, of a community. Um, there's for African people, you can sign up to the website, write in where, where are you, who you are, what's your expertise, what microscopes do you have, etc. So that's one of the ideas. And then what they want to do is to have this landscape where we can see where are the strong points for collaboration? Who has this microscope? Who has that microscope, et cetera? So um, you can see that it's quite a, a diverse group of people. It's not just students. It's not just imaging facility people. It's a lot of different, uh, a variety of people involved and covering a wide variety of research fields. Um, we have many online events. However, every year we're trying to get together. Last year it was in Cape Town. This year it will be in Stellenbosch. It wasn't the idea to have back-to-back -back in one country, but because global bioimaging is in South Africa this year, we wanted to get all the Africans to be able to join global bioimaging. So we decided, okay, one more time in South Africa, and then it will travel around the world in the, in the consecutive years so that we do represent the whole of Africa. We're not just representing South Africa. My work. Um, I'm part of the microscopy training and education working group. Um, I'm going to run through this. So our mandate is training. We want to make sure that people are trained, that, that there's training availability, but also to actually harness um, and exploit the current expertise. They are actually experts in South in Africa. We do, just don't know about it, all of them. So we're trying to get those experts to join the working group, and, and we are um, trying to get uh, material ready for Africa. So there's a second part, is to create and provide resources for the African community. I've been part of the CZI meetings the past two days and everyone's talking with um, workshops and everyone's providing uh, resources. And I thought, where do we fit in? Because we're also doing that. We're also making basic curricula ready. But I think what came up in many of the meetings is Africa wants to take ownership. We don't just want to log into all the, the different training overseas. We want to actually say we are microscopists we have expertise even if we don't have it now we want to build it up so we are creating our own curriculum as well with the help of other um other people outside but we are going to create our own resources as well so that people in africa can relate to that material um so just a quick we have planned since for the past two years we've been working on on three levels of of a curricula the first one was finished by the end of last year so we did a webinar series I'm just going to skim through the introductory level. We did introduction to microscopy, light microscopy techniques like phase contrast, dark field, etc. Sample preparation, long every we try to cover most of what we 
a, a broad overview of sample preparation for microscopy, fluorescence, quite a good introduction to what fluorescence microscopy is, not confocal yet. And then um, image analysis, what does data look, well, not, not full on, this is how you do it, click there, click there, more or less, what is a digital image? What is noise? Where does it come from? That type of basic, basic information. And then finally, we try to, to showcase how the imaging can actually be used in research. It, it can give quantifiable data. It's not something for just pretty pictures. Um, so that was the, the first course. The next course is our goal for this year. We are taking it further, more now in fluorescence microscopy modalities, confocal, super resolution, more higher level. And then I've put everything that's like a follow up as version two, more on sample prep, more in depth, um, more in depth on image analysis also. What is deconvolution, um, segmentation, all of those. Um, data management, because in, South, in Africa, we're not on par with what the world is discussing in terms of how do we work with big data? And then um, furthermore, also an extension of experiments. How do you drive hypothesis-driven experiments with microscopy? Right, the and beyond part of my talk. We are all connected to GBI. The Global Bioimaging um, talk will be in, um, I'm just gonna start playing it in the background. If you don't mind, it's not playing. Hold on. Yeah, I realized that. No, there we go. Okay, so I would like to invite anyone listening, anyone here. Um, South Africa is an incredibly exciting place to visit. We have nice weather. We have winelands because the the the, um, the global bioimaging will be in the winelands this year. Stanbosch is right in the heart of the winelands. And the middle image is an, a picture from the venue um, on my phone, so it's not professional either. But you can see the view is incredible. Um, we are going to meet and talk and discuss and really engage. And we, it's especially important for the African community to actually see that we are connected globally. We're going to have a, a image um, facility training workshop afterwards for two and a half, two days. Um, so I think this is really, really exciting for South Africa and Africa in, in, in a whole. And we would like you to think about coming to South Africa. It's for all of any, anyone interested in imaging. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, we are up for questions. It's amazing. Why do you think about your questions? <laughs> I also find it very interesting. I wanted to um, keep in mind that from you, your one third, the first part of your presentation is your daily job, and everything else Lisa does on her own in kind of free time. <laughs> So we have to uh, think that for um, South Africa Bioimaging, there's actually no financial support at this moment. So all work and all the initiatives and all the work behind this is, is completely done from engaged people like yourself. And we're really, really happy to have you. Doing oh, this work. It's a pleasure. Thank it, it is positive if the one thinks, okay, we work hard. It's the other lady who does ABIC with me, mm -hmm. she's from Egypt. So from the South of Africa to the North of Africa, we are the two group leaders for working group. Um, we meet at 9.30 in the evenings because she's got a little child and I've got a little children. So we all both like, our oh, kids in bed, right, let's meet. So, but it's very, very motivating. And, and it's almost as if I, I often say to people, if you do your day-to-day -day job, you sit in the dark room most okay. of the day. These type of things keep me motivated and energized. So it's hard work, but I don't mind. Because rewarding it's, well. it's rewarding. That's <laughs> the word, yeah. Yeah. Come in, please. Not so much a question, it's more a comment. Actually, I really want to commend you on, on the level of sustainability in your facility. I think it's one of the highest mm -hmm. I've ever seen in, in anything. I mean, people may say, but everything I heard is really among the highest sustainability levels oh. that's I've ever heard of. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And it's very hard, I guess. Uh, so okay. maybe that actually is a question. So since you then have to charge for the use of the, the, the systems, power, the systems, whatever, um, are there internal programs at the level of uh, of the institution, at the level of the uh, of the nation, 
that actually support the access or where does it come from? No, it's all basically if the researchers manage to get grants, um, they will allocate some of that money to the to the um, to the facility, but it's not a committed funding. So I know in some of the other countries I've learned that if you have it in your in your grant budget core facility uh, funding that will go almost directly to the core facility. I'm not not sure if it's everywhere, but I've learned of places where the funding actually goes to the core facility. So the budgeting is easier. Yeah, if this if the money runs out, the money ran out and they stopped the experiments. I had a, a, a PI last year, didn't have research funding. She bought one hour for the year. She told me we have to get a few images in one hour so I can just put it in the project so that we have some representative images. And that's the reality, unfortunately. What we're hoping for, and this is where Sabi on a higher level, we want to start engaging with the university institutions and also national and say, listen, we can't. And, and the other institutions in South Africa are struggling even more um, to keep sustainability. There are instruments that's just not fixed. I've learned of a confocal at in the, one of the universities in the north. It's completely not used. They couldn't fix the laser because they don't have the funding. So um, it is a problem in South Africa. And we're hoping to put it on the roadmap the national scientific roadmap and say, listen, imaging is important, please. And open facility usage has to be a, 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 um, part of the plan for, for South Africa, even if it's not just imaging, but open access core facility funds to, to pay the fees. Part of, of the, so yeah, your question is very good. The answer is no, there is no, none. We realize that, so we're hoping to address that. Yeah. Maybe as a follow up, but is that is possible inside the grants to uh, to reserve money for for facility usage or to, to dedicate for facility usage? Um, I think if they if they ask for a budget, they do put it in the budget. But it's I don't know because I don't. That's the other thing that's a, to me a bit of a limitation. The researchers very very rarely include us as facility staff in their budgeting plans. So often they budget too little number one and number two all i have to do is write a letter to say yes we're an open access facility and they, they submit that to the funding i have no idea what they've put in the budget and how it, the budget allocations work and how they are required to stick to the budget um, points i don't know and that's also something that i think is a, is limiting because i think if we play a big, bigger role there that would also help sustainability that is actually part of the paper you presented. So that how to make a case not only for so for different stakeholders, not only for in this case for the funders and to be on the roadmap, but also to other scientists, to the researchers at the institution, to mm -hmm. keep to be more raise awareness that they have to include the growth facility costs and the impact and how that will reflect back on their own research later yeah. on. So yeah. there's still quite work to be done there as well. Yes, lots of work to do. <laughs> Anyone but else? it is amazing numbers and you said the other facilities do not so in South Africa do not have to keep in general that so they can uh, offer lower rates of users yes. as well. so we, that's one of our we have the, some of the highest rates in South Africa so often our labs are not very uh, the, a, there's not a lot of feet through the lab 2018 there was a lot of funding you'd see it was amazing that suddenly we reached cost effectivity mm -hmm. and then the year after everyone said they, they, they're waiting for grants they're waiting for grants and we're sitting and we're thinking but the lab is quiet why is the lab quiet we have high fees and the other facilities don't have that high fees because often their salaries are paid by departmental fund or institutional funds. So they don't necessarily have to pay for all of the the um, the full amount of, of costs for running a facility like this. Yes. Um, and maybe I missed it, but uh, how high are the costs you have? I don't remember. I translate it in euros because- <laughs> I'm gonna try. Um, for, I can only remember the, the main microscopes, so the, the volume scope, the um, confocal and the Merlin SIM. Um, they cost 800 Rand an hour to use. That's, I think, uh, relates to 40 euros per hour. What is that? Is that high, low? In... Okay, South Africa, that's high. If, if you relate any, any costs in euro, it's it's usually lower in South Africa for that same type of thing. So in South Africa, 40 euros is quite expensive for our, that's assisted use. We have a scale for assisted, non-assisted as well. At some point, we also had a, a cost for after hours, but we find that 
often then we are quiet in the day and then nighttime there's many people and often the breakages happen in the evenings. Yes. <laughs> so we kind of want to keep, if it's not full, come do your work in, in the day as well so that we are there for whatever support is, is needed. Um, but if it's full, you can still work after hours as well. We, we do, if you're fully trained, capable. I think the, the grass where I had showed the usage with assistance, without assistance, one of those blocks is after hours. And our after hours compared very well to the non-assisted. After you're the non-assisted, you are in the lab, I'm there in my office. There's more or less equal call hours. Related to that, actually, how many users roughly do you have per year of in the microsystems? Um, for the confocal, it's somewhere between 80 and 100. Um, not all, some, some are like these people, two, three hours. I just want the images, representative images. All my data come from Western blotting or flow cytometry or something like that. We just want to have representative images. And then we have students where uh, Professor Ben Lewis, for example, spends a lot of money and he sees students' time in, in the facility where they sit for hours and, and um, do long-term studies, overnight studies. I had another student, different group, but he came in half past four. We, we basically, our assisted time stopped at half past four and he came in half past four, he started, half past eight tomorrow morning, he finishes because that's our first assisted bookings. Um, so yeah, they are, it's 100 people doesn't mean a 100 equal, yeah, I guess everywhere. Yeah, I was going to ask because I guess the, the, the rate then also hinders some people for recruiting so for using the services, but you would have more time capacity or free capacity to take more users if uh, yeah. needed. And yeah, we are I not think sorry. Ben has here also a comment. Perhaps we can think was related to the... You can unmute, Ben. Uh, everyone. Oh, yes, oh you might you. Can, can um, you hear me? Yes, but how do we put... You're not on the share. Stream us, stop share screen. I did. Oh, okay. I now they, I share this one. They've put, um, sorry, they've the tech guy put <laughs> the screen with the presentation on this screen, but it's not the same screen that's been shared on Zoom. And that's what's I can, yeah, but can Ben, see. we can hear you. I'm looking, going through that to show you while you speak, but we can hear. Go ahead. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. So just a very brief comment. So, Lisa, thanks so much. And thank you for the questions of the audience. That's exactly the um, the challenges and hence um, the work with Sabi uh, to to raise awareness that microscopy is in fact an, an equally important tool in research, similar to genomics and proteomics and so forth. The grants are of course very small, and the hence the allocation made for imaging is incredibly small. So hence it's so important for us to really raise this up to now the level of. Uh, strategic importance for the university, the departments of science and technology. And there is now indeed interest uh, so that bioimaging can A, start to feature on the roadmap, that the funders can be brought in. So, you know, the, the issues that Lisa has raised are, are really pressing and are quite crippling uh, the environments in, in South Africa. And hence, it's really important for us, this, uh, the work with GBI, the global network, um, because through that we can just leverage what we couldn't at all uh, on our own. So, so yeah, so Lisa, thanks so much. Great presentation and, and the questions are spot on. Any other questions? Sorry. Yeah, you said in the industry, um, so it's open access. So yes. how high is the percentage of industry that gets in and also takes themselves there? For the fluorescent microscopy, which is the most where I have all the numbers, I don't all the, have all the numbers for the EM, but um, for for microscopy, for the fluorescence, it's less than 5% a year. Um, we image, I've imaged milk, cheese, dough, bread dough. They're trying to make a low fat Fat cake. Uh, I don't know what you call it. We call it fed cook in South Africa. It's an oil oil thingy, and they tried to see if they can have a low fat version of that. So we had to test how much oil they stained the oil with now red or added it and to then test, to test to test how deep the oil penetrates into the dough. Um, so very small scale industry work for a few. I've imaged meat as well. Um, I guess for the lack of microscopy. 
it's a bit higher much much higher there's a mining industry component where because the, the lady who's doing the edx and, and wds she's working she worked in the mining industry before and she they send a lot of imaging uh, samples for uh, elemental mapping of of different quartz and i can't remember all the names that i've heard in the lab <laughs> but yeah so there's a very strong component for material sciences and and so on and identification of elements elements and for the same that's where the most income comes in for because of the edx if it, if we didn't have the edx component and that expertise from madeleine we would have struggled just as much with the same if it was just based on normal imaging and and same and and stem rates are the same rates are the same we, we try not to discourage using a good microscope the, the the lower end microscopes are slightly cheaper but we don't want to make the volume scope 1500 because it's really expensive to do it we'll no, rather wondering if it's possible to really? if kind of students get a little lower rate yeah. oh. and then industry sorry i so but yes there is a difference there's in other words there are three rates there's an industry rate which is about 80 percent above the um is it 80 no, it's not 80% above. It's not so much above either because you also want to still motivate them to, to bring samples. So it's a bit higher. Um, and then the assisted price for, for researchers and then the non-assisted price for, for if you can, if you're fully trained, if that makes sense. So what you meant with the price are the same for the instrumentation, but the user has different price. The use, yeah. user have different options, yeah. Uh, maybe I missed it, but I wanted to understand, like, uh, so it's really nice that you're putting together all these planning modules. Have you been able to, like, uh, do a survey or how did you come down to narrow down to what is the actual training need or has this, is this planned for the future or is this something you're thinking about? Or are you talking about the African bioimaging curriculum? Yes, yeah. exactly. So the, okay. yeah, like, do, you wonder, do people really need training for the like basics of light microscopy or is it for image analysis or is it for like, yeah. which modules are like more required by the community? It's mainly, um, not really a, an, a proper survey as far as I remember. It was ma mainly from discussions and meetings. So the first few meetings of AVIC was what are the challenges? What do you need to learn? So it's a basically community input of what are we going to do? And we've had a long list of topics and then we said, okay, what fits where? So the topics were just random. We need this, we need this, we need this. And then we started to, to pull them into an introductory level and an intermediate level and, and advanced. Yeah. Yeah, just to give you like a, so the the community on the meetings community definitely uh, how many countries are now represented avic several right? i can't remember but uh, basically imaging scientists that are in um imaging facilities or similar are addressed so there are uh, imaging access enables in their countries so in all over and so they do have a very i think in-depth um impression of what are the needs for their uh, ecosystems there which are normally represented or yeah. representing on the country as well what does happen because it's a flowing uh, i want to say flowing um community where people have left when it's just got too busy and there are new people joining every now and again and some of it is changed like oh we need more of that for example we started with very few ele uh, electron microscope microscopists and now a lot more electron microscopy people are joining and they're asking but why is light microscopy when is the electron like <laughs> if you want electron microscopy as long as you help do it build it I, we can't build it for you get involved and we'll build a we can build a, an electron microscopy curriculum as well but we need the people we yeah. need, the people who started was more more the light microscopy people that's why it's a, so far a light microscopy curriculum we are planning to expand into into electron microscopy as well if that answers the question it does answer the question but also like just to say that I find it very interesting and incredibly cool that you actually are making like your image data management. <laughs> how about facilities anywhere? People don't think about these things until it's too late. So I mean, I feel like if you start like with the basic modules on these topics, I think it's super important and mm. like, really interesting to keep that. What we also have, what also happened, I'm supposed to do the like data management workshop workshop we've kind of selected these these topics which we are not used to teaching because i'm used to confocal i didn't choose confocal i'm choosing something where i also need to learn so that i'm forced to go and learn and find and connect and 
what what is what are people doing globally with data management so in the process i'm also learning so it is good feedback and spots so i i might have actually talk to you soon yes we can more <laughs> yeah. share and talk about uh, how to design a module in that direction fantastic thank you so much <laughs> I well think done. we're going to wrap it up. I think many of you will still meet. Uh, and you're also very welcome to join us for, for lunch. I don't remember what we wrote in the agenda, but we'll be, I think, 12.30 in the cafeteria, in the canteen. And otherwise, I'll see you, some of you later. And thank you very much for being here. And I will share also the contact to, to Lisa and Sarah for imaging and the link to all participants so you can further follow up if you have any other. Yes, suggestion. I just realized I forgot to put my contact details. No, 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 I can send it around. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.